Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. I'm your host Mikey. Today we're going to do the Sampler Crochet Cowl. This is using Karen and Pantone where the color has been decided by experts and allowing you to have some amazing things. Let's talk a little bit about Karen and Pantone first and then we're gonna dive heavily into today's pattern to begin. Karen and Pantone is expert color done in yarn and what it is it's precisely matched in order to make things look amazing. So let's take a look at the packaging here. This is a braid format. This is how it's presented. Each one of these are separate balls and they have ideas here on the, the ball bands as you see. So the inspiration for this particular colorway was this here and you can see that the, here is the Pantone swatch color so you can see what matches here. So this one here is a different Pantone swatch sample just like you see but everything is interchangeable and Karen and Pantone they have a color tool where you can actually change the color of the braids and you can change the color of the model just to see what it will look like if you would like to switch off your braids to something else. We also have tutorial available to show you how to break open this a particular package and how to wrap it and roll it into balls and it's really kind of kind of neat. So here's my advanced tips that I'm going to show you share with you next. For maximum success what I decided to do is that I looked at the sample and I also looked at the color play tool as well to make a determination of what color that I was going to use. I, I choose based on what's easier for you to follow here on camera. So when I when I decided to do that is that I changed the color. So for example the A was a different color that is here in the model. So I determined based on the sample that I have is that I just went through and this is green, blue, purple, mauve and rose based on this. So it's not the exact color name but you know it's just for my easier uh, recognition to do that. So what you have is in the pattern is that there is going to be saying change colored A, uh, B, C, D, E. So what's going to happen is that you have to make sure that you keep an eye on this. There's one disadvantage of Karen and Pantone where it's really not but you have to be thinking ahead always with this yarn. With any of the Karen and Pantone patterns that you find you simply cannot just go, and go rogue with one of the colors. So for example in order to get this work the designers have figured it out on how to maximize each one of the little balls that are in the yarn itself. So what's happened is that they've done all the mathematics and figured everything out. So if you decide for example you wanted the whole section one solid color you're going to run out of yarn. So even if you're switching off these colors you have to commit. So what I would strongly recommend to you is that when it says to switch to B, switch to B. So just take a look at the colors and assign your colors and then go with it. For myself I just decided to see what would happen if I not really planned it too far in advance and I just decided to just do something quite fun. So once I have done this I've committed to the whole color palette that is in here but I just followed the new colors that I assigned it. So this cowl is made up of two pieces. Let's talk about that next. So though it's hard to tell on the models what you have is that there is two pieces here. So this is piece number one. Two pieces are exactly identical. So what's going to happen is that you're going to make an identical one of these and it's going to flip upside down so that the the this color here is going to be on the top side. So what we're going to have to join it at the very end and then at the very end of this project we're going to have to join the seams. So what you're looking at here is not a one solid piece unit. Here's the neat thing about it. I opened up only one braid just to see how far it would go. So you have a little bit left over at the end of your braids with certain colors. Some of it like this color here I, I was, there's not enough to do anything with it. My point being is that the nice thing about this particular sample is that this is one braid so then the second one on top will be another braid itself. So it's an actually easy way to kind of maintain your yarn. So I probably recommended that you open one braid at a time and then when you're ready for the second half open that braid and then begin. So I want to keep a hold of these sample cards so that I'm always remembering what those colors are as I'm working throughout my project. So once you unwrap all the braids, so I would do one braid at a time and then just uh, use it up and then when you're doing the second half do the second braid. I just put them inside my yarn bowl. So my friend Bruce made me this yarn bowl. It's really quite nice. So what I'm going to do is that I'm going to leave just the one strand in here. You don't need a yarn bowl to do this. I just I have it and I might as well use it. So a yarn bowl comes really quite handy for this because you're wrapping into balls you can just feed it through and it has a little notch if you're ever doing that and therefore it'll roll around instead of rolling around on the floor or, th or the sofa. So it's a really neat way to begin. So let's talk about the crochet hook size because that might make a difference for you today as well. 
So let's talk about the crochet hook size is six millimeter size J. I'm a, a pretty much of a tight crocheter so in order to get the gauge I went to a six and a half millimeter size K crochet hook instead. So what I decided to do is that after I did the first sample here which I've done now my homework is that my second sample I can quickly look at it and see what colors are gonna be in order without having to flip back and forth in the pattern. So my reasoning to you is that I think the first time you're gonna go through it may feel a little slow to you because you're double uh, checking the colors that you're going to do. But then once you have the first one the second one's gonna go much easier because you just look at the sample and just figure out the order in which the yarn is gonna go into play. So let's see how you're gonna do today. Oh yeah there's also a diagram. So diagram is on page number three and you can follow that diagram here as we work our way through one through seventeen which I'll do completely with you on camera. So let's uh, without further ado let's begin and let's see how you do today. So let's begin today with your color number one in color A. Whatever you have assigned it to be. You can have many different things. There are many different braids. I think there's like 27 braids. Some are solid though. And so what we're going to do is chain 79. So just uh, do one, two, three, four, four, five and go all the way to 79 for me and see me back here in just a moment. Once you have your 79 on here you're going to then continue now into row number one. Going a uh, fourth chain from the hook so just count it back. So one, two, three and four. Get the back hump of the stitch or of the chain and just double crochet into that one. So what I want you to do in row number one is one double crochet in each one of the back humps of the chain all the way down. In just a moment I'll see you at the end of this chain and then we'll continue from there into row number two. So I'm just coming into the very last stitch here and last chain and then that's it. So let's turn our work and let's progress now to round number two, or row number two. We're gonna keep this color on for one more time. So we're gonna use the, almost the remaining of this ball. There's not gonna be enough left to do anything with this a particular yarn at the end. So we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three and then we're gonna go to the back uh, post of each one of these double crochets. To do that you wrap the hook first come in from behind and come in through between the chain or the posts. Pop it back out to the back side. Pull through and then pull through two and two. That's a back post double crochet and you're gonna do that on each one. So wrap, come in between the next post from behind and back out to the back. Pull through, pull through two and two. One more time to show you. So through the back, back out to the back and then pull through two and two. Please do the back post double crochet for each one all the way down for row number two. So I'm coming up to the very end of the row and I'm still doing the back post double crochet and you are going to want to do a back post double crochet around the turning chain as well. So then that concludes this color for the duration of this panel. So that what you're going to do at the very end just kind of pull it through and I'm just gonna pull the whole thing through because I don't have anything left and this is the knot that was left at the end of the ball. I <laughs> wasn't planning on that. So anyway so this is all you have left at the end of this. This is my point is that you, you can have fun with the color but the way that the patterns are designed is that the, the designers have decided to um, have maximum yield for the amount of uh, yarn so that you don't really have much waste. So I'm just gonna lock it into position at, and at the end of this what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna weave in my yarn tails at that particular point. So I'll, let's get started and I'm gonna be switching colors now to begin the next layer, layer number three, row number three. Let's turn your project now and let's go for row number three. So I just wanna pay attention to where the posts are and I'm going to join the new color. So I'm just gonna leave a little bit of a long tail so that I can get a darning needle into it. Don't be crazy though. Don't leave too, don't leave too much waste um, because some of these colors come right near to the end of the ball. So just join it with the slip stitch and then chain one and two. So then that counts as a half double crochet and what we're going to do for this particular one is that we're going to work in the back loops only. So just advancing to the next one. So if you're new to crochet there's two strands the one and two both of them make up a stitch but if you go in the first one it's the front loop. Go in the back one it's the back loop. So just starting in the next one so wrap the hook first and half double crochet in the back loop of the next one and continue then down the road. So just go in the back loop so see how it's just one strand. So back loop half double crochet all the way down and then this is the only time this color will appear at this moment and so we're gonna fasten off at the end. We're gonna be bringing it back in the future so the ball that you have left over is not a waste. We'll be using that again coming up soon. So half double crochet in the back loops all the way down. 
coming up all the way down to the other side and we're still doing half double crochet in the back loop. Make sure that you still do that final turning chain to finish. And that's it for this color but we'll be returning back to this color. So I want you to fasten off weave in your ends and then we're gonna turn our project and then begin the next uh, row. The next rows are kind of fun actually. They create the peekaboo peek looks that we see like a dotted a dotted line and that's what that's gonna happen. So let's turn our project and let's begin row number four. Let's begin row number four. I'm more going for a purple this time. And this time we're gonna work in the front loops. So remember what I showed you with the back loops. This time it's gonna be in the front loops. So we're just gonna join to the front loop of the first one. Join it with the slip stitch. I'm not actually in the front loop. I'm actually in this in the chain. Sorry of the the woven in end. Just pay attention to that. It's nice to catch it right off the bat, but it wouldn't have held anyway. So I wouldn't have gone up. I wouldn't have got much further. So we're just going to join it with the slip stitch just to pull through and then I want you to chain one and I'm in the front loop only and I want to uh, single crochet in the front loop. Just I'm burying that yarn as I go. So now what you wanna do is that you wanna chain one and you're going to skip one stitch here on the next on the, on the next one and come to the front loop of the next one over. So just single crochet. So chain one, skip one and single crochet in the second one over. And you're gonna do that all the way down the row for this. So skip one, single crochet in the next. Please do that all the way down and uh, I'll see you at the end of this row. As you come back down all the way there's chain one and then it's continuing then the front loop of the final. So then that's it for this color for this moment and you're gonna be bringing it back not next row but or not one that we're just about to do but we'll bring it back right in the one after that. So what we're going to do is that we're going to switch our color then. Just weave in these ends and just pay attention to where things are. Turn your project and let's begin our next one and it's more of a dusty pink that I'm going to move to next. So let's begin. So we're going into regular stitches now for a little bit uh, for a few rows and then we'll be back into these front or back loops. So you're just gonna come into the very first stitch and what you want to do is just join it and then chain one and then single crochet in the same one. So now you're going to single crochet in the next single crochet that's available to you or sorry it's in the space that it's in there sorry. And then chain one and then skip the next single crochet and go right into the space. Okay so it's, do you see the space? It's pretty obvious. And then chain one and then skip to the next space. Once you get beyond these uh, where the yarns all start it just gets easier to look at it. So just uh, chain one and then going into each of the spaces all the way down. And I'll see you at the end of this row. So I'm coming to the end of the row. It's single crocheting in the last space here and then you single crochet in the last stitch. So those two are side by side. There's no spaces in between. So that's it for this color. We're gonna bring back that purple again and then we're going to have some fun. So let's uh, weave this off and then let's begin our purple. So I've just turned my project already off camera and then I'm going to start my purple. So the purple is gonna go into the starting of the first one. And we're just going to join it, chain one and single crochet in the same one. So like before when we did the purple, we're going to chain up one and then we just go to this next space, the chain one space and just single crochet. Okay and then chain one and then go into the next space, the chain one space and just single crochet. So chain one and go into the next space and please do that all the way down the row. So I'm just finishing up all the way down, chain one and then single crochet in the final single crochet that you have and that's the end for this purple. So you see the nice big, big peekaboo colors that happen. So the next uh, section that we're about to do is going to set us up for that beautiful um, really great boxy looking section that is in the uh, middle of the panel and we're gonna be doing that next. So let's change out our yarn again and let's begin. So we're reintroducing this color back into the panel and we've already used it once already. 
down here and now we're going to begin and get ourselves set up so that we can create that box looking shape that is awesome. So we're going to create a, a section here. You're just gonna go into the regular stitch right into the very first single crochet and you're just gonna join it. So you gotta watch how you do this one and we'll be doing another row like this in the future. So you're gonna chain up one and single crochet in the same one. So in the chain one spaces that you have you're going to half double crochet. No big deal, right? And then in the next single crochet you're going to single crochet. And then in the next space it's a half double crochet and I want you to keep doing that all the way down. So single in the next, half in the next space. Please do that all the way down the row. So I'm coming up all the way to the other side here and I'm just going into the space here. Half double crochet and then the final. So we're done for this color again. So we're gonna fasten off and then we're going to then begin the next uh, three uh, rows which will be the same color. So you don't have to change. So that's awesome. So let's turn in your project now and go for the next three rows of the same color. So it's a, it's a light uh, pink in my case. So what we're going to do is join. We're only gonna work in the front loops and just join to the first one. So just a front loop only. And you're going to then pull through chain one and single crochet in the same front loop and I did what I did before I grabbed it around that starting strand. I don't really wanna weave in my tails until I'm at the end of the project. It's just easier for me uh, what I prefer. So let's try again. So just a front loop only and pulling it through chain one and single crochet in the same front loop. So that gets yourself started and then what you're going to do is you move all the way down then is in the front loops only. It's just single crochet. Nice and simple. So that will be awesome. You're actually technically looking at the back of the project right now and uh, it'll make sense uh, when you come to be near the end and it's quite awesome. So let's continue to, to do front loops, single crochet all the way down. So just coming up all the way down to the other side just front loop, single crochet all the way to the last stitch and then we're gonna turn. So we're gonna keep this color again. So what we're going to do then this time is that we are going to uh, chain one and in the back loop only I want you to place, we're gonna do slip stitching all the way down. So the back loop only, just come into the back loop and I want you to slip so pull through and through. Now I believe the designers have done this because this can maximize the yield of this yarn giving a little bit extra because we're gonna use it one more time and do some half double crochets. So by doing slip stitching you're making your yarn go further because we're gonna use it again on the other side when we do these peekaboos we're gonna put that, that this color in the middle instead of what was there on the top side. You'll notice that the tops and the bottoms of these um, ones are slightly different in the same panel. So we'll continue to, and to slip stitch all the way down. So I'm coming down the other side and I'm just uh, slip stitching right to the very last one. I'm gonna turn our work and we're gonna keep this color on one more time and we're going to chain two and we're going to work in the front loop only. So watch this one here. When you do these uh, slip stitching this what you see here is not the stitch. It's actually right over so it looks like it's turning over. So you're gonna come into the next one and once you kind of do one you kind of see it too. So you're just gonna come in the next one and you're gonna half double crochet. So it's kind of like over. If you actually go into this first bar that you see here that's not a stitch that's called a camel. It would be a camel stitch if you did that. It's not wrong but uh, it's just something that would uh, appear different if you did it that way instead. So it's up to you. You're not gonna use any more yarn by changing that location. So that's kind of your creative choice I guess. So just half double crochet in the front loop all the way down the other side. So I'm just coming right to the very end and the last one's always a little tricky because it's tight where it needs to go but it also be part of the sewing too so it's not too important I guess. So you wanna go right to the end and let's get rid of this color but you got a little bit, well you got quite a bit left on the ball and you're gonna be using that one more time in this panel for the peekaboo that will appear. So instead of this color it will be this color that you're using and that's per, as per the pattern too. So that's actually pretty awesome. So let's move on then to the next color and now you're half, almost halfway through. We're gonna create that box looking shape on the next one and it's gonna be awesome. So you watch how that's gonna play into effect now. So let's turn our work and let's get ready. 
So let's begin. You're going to bring this color back. This is the final time that you'll use it. So you've used it here and here and this is the last time and the uh, remaining of the ball. I know you're probably a little nervous. It'll take you to the end. <laughs> I've already done the first one so I verify that too. So you're just gonna work in the regular stitch work on the top of this. So just uh, get the regular stitch that you have. It's always kind of harder when it's um, a half double crochet. I found that on other stitch alongs that we've done as well. There we go, got it. So we're just going to join it and then chain one and single crochet in the same one. So here's what we're going to do. You're going to single crochet in the next single crochet. Just burying that a little bit. And now the next one is called an extended single crochet. So I want you to look where this color is down here and I want you to go to the third one in. So it's one, two, and three. And you're gonna grab it by the front loop that you see and it's called the extended. So you're just gonna reach on down and go in behind the front loop of that one and pull through and give it some slack. So just kinda wiggle it a little bit and then finish it off as a regular single crochet. So then you're gonna come back to the top. So that one, this stitch here equals the one that's on the hook. So you're going to single crochet in the next two. So one and two. And you wanna give it a little bit of slack so that might be a little tight. So let's try it again. So you're just gonna come to, the th uh, so you're skipping two. So see this is the first one. So one and two, go to the third. Give it a little bit of slack you get used to it and then that stitch is the one that's here. So you're gonna single crochet in the next two. Okay, so then back down. So one and two, go to the third. Get the front loop, pull it up. Now I'm, now I'm getting a little more looser. And then just single crochet in the next two. So I want you to do that all the way down for this row. So I'm coming all the way to the end and I'm just Come and pop them down. And once you do your last one there, it's the last two single crochets that you'll end up with. So it's in the turning chain there. And then that's it for that color for this particular panel. And uh, let's just see how much yarn you had left over. See, you didn't have too much left, but it wasn't enough to scare you. So that's awesome. So we're going to just switch out this yarn now and we're going to then kind of create the mirror effect. So we're gonna start creating this effect on the opposite side. So let's do that next. So we're just gonna turn our work and we're gonna begin the next one. So I wanna point out something to you. Last time we did this same technique, we had purple and then this and then purple again. So the next one on top of this is the middle one and then the purple and then the middle one again that you see. So that's kind of a helpful little tip for you. So to begin that particular process as we begin is that we are going to go into the back loop only. So let's just join it to the back loop. Making sure it's the real back loop. <laughs> and I want you to uh, join it with the slip stitch, chain one and single crochet in the same one. So now what we're, we're gonna begin to do is chain up one and then skip the next one and go into the back of the loop of the next one after that. Okay, so that's, that's the weaving in end. I prefer to sometimes leave these little um, mishaps that I'm doing in a video. Just A, it proves that I'm human, but it also proves that, you know, um, you just gotta sometimes be careful too. So you're just going in the back loop only. It's always kind of a little more difficult in the beginning because you're working with all these new tails. But we'll be dealing with that at the end. If you feel comfortable to get rid of them, then do that. So these are single crochet, chain one. Sorry, I was rambling. Uh, I apologize for that. Please don't leave a comment that I rambled. <laughs> okay, so chain one and then single crochet in the next. Please do that all the way down for this row. As you come to the end, it's just chain one, skip the next one and then back loop into the last one. We're gonna get rid of this color and let's switch out to the next. So I have a slight correction. I think I already said it in the tutorial. So I told you that we were gonna do purple and then this color in purple. So we have this color but the next color is actually this, this, this uh, lighter color here. So I apologize if uh, hopefully that you've just caught this, that you can do that properly. So if you just follow the color tra uh, trend on the pattern anyway, you would have done it right. So you're going to do the next row and you're just going to attach in. You're just going into regular stitch. Uh, pull through chain one and then single crochet in the same one. So you're going to single crochet in the next chain or sorry in the next chain space and then chain one 
and then you are going to come into the next space after that. So skip this single crochet and just go around this space. So chain one and then going around the next space. So please do that all the way down the row. So I'm coming up down to the other side just going into the last chain one space and single crochet in the one after that and it's done. So you're technically done this color for this particular panel and let's see how much we have left over. So we could use that to also uh, attach the two panels together at the when the well, at the end. So I have to make up my mind on that. So now we're going to switch back to this dusty pink that you are this kind of like mauve color and we're going to do another row of that next. So let's turn our work and let's begin. So let's begin with our mauve and we're just going to make it look great. So we're gonna come into the first one, attach it with a slip stitch, chain one and single crochet in the same one. And then chain one and go to the first chain one space. This is a single crochet that's next so you're just skipping over that and go right into the space. Single crochet, chain one and then keep jumping over to the next space. Chain one, go to the next space. Please do that all the way down and if it works out like you should be able to see that these two moves are on top of each other to create that little uh, dotted line effect on your cowl. Please do that all the way down. Okay, all the way back down to the other side. Just go right into the chain one space. Chain one, skip over the next single crochet and go to the one right after that and then this color is done for now. We're gonna, we still have, if you look at the ball you still have enough and we're gonna be using it again one more time before the end of this panel. So let's just finish this off and let's uh, begin the next row. Let's turn our work and let's begin the next row. Here we go and we're gonna bring back the purple so we're gonna use that up here at this moment. And we're gonna come into the top. So just like kind of we did before, we've kind of already done this before but we'll, we have to review it again. So you're just gonna come into the first single crochet and you're going to just chain one and single crochet in the same stitch and then in the next chain one space I want you to half double crochet. Okay, so the next single crochet is a single crochet and the next chain one space is a half double crochet and you're gonna do that all the way down for this one here. We have one more row to do and then you're gonna go back and do a second panel that you'll be putting together. So it's either single crochet and the single crochet and then a half double in the chain one space. Please do that all the way down the row. So I'm coming up to the end of the row and half double crochet in the space that we have and then single crochet in the last. So one more row left. Let's just finish this color off and let's turn our work and let's begin the next. So let's begin our last row. So this is the one panel. So you're gonna do two identical to this and this is your final row number 17 and we are going to attach to the back loop only of the very first one here. So go into a back loop only. Let's see if I got the right strand. I do. <laughs> Been on a roll for this one here today. So let's uh, continue. So we're just going to join it. Chain two counts as a half double crochet and in the back loop as you progress all the way down I want you to um, just half double crochet in each one of the stitches as you hit them. So back loop half double crochet all the way down the row. I'll see you at the end of this row which is the final. So I'm coming all the way to the other side just half double crochet in the back loop and then that's it. So that's it for this. So what you want to do is two panels identical to this. Um, I decided to leave my tails until the very end of the project. So I have a second one already created that I showed you already at the beginning of this tutorial. So what I'm gonna do now is that you wanna get your second one done and then you can progress at this point then to show you, and I can show you how to put it together. So let's do that next. So what I want you to do is that I'm gonna worry about my tails at the end. Give it a good stretch. Okay, just do both sides. Because this has a beautiful stitch definition, you'll see that it works out really quite nice. And then let's grab the other one and kind of stretch it to the kind of the same section. There should be the same amount of counts that you have. So with the right, uh, with the wrong sides facing each other, so you wanna put the right side facing down on the back so you see the wrong side up and you wanna see the right side facing up here. So okay, so if you turn it over you should see the good side and etc. So what we want to do is that we wanna slip stitch our way across this top line using one of the colors. Um, I have enough for the purple to make the purple the joining color. So let's do that next. 
So what we're going to do is that use the purple and the purple is gonna be the joining. So you're going to go to the first stitch on the front side and you're gonna to go to the back loop only. And then on the other one, okay, so it's facing away from you so just make sure that it's the back, technically the back loop but it's gonna be the front loop on this side here. And you're just gonna join it with a slip stitch. So just pull through and through like this. So now what you're going to do is going to the next one, back loop only. And then this one here is the front, the front loop that you can see. And pull through and through. Don't be a little cheap about this yarn. Give it a bit of slack. Uh, slip stitching has a tendency to be ultra tight when you go to um, work with it. So if, you, if you're not giving enough uh, slack then what can happen is that it'll be creating a section in your project that will look really tight. Okay, so just you'll get used to it in time. So just kind of pulling it through. It's almost like you're sewing them together. You will notice if you are being tight as well, you'll notice it's starting to buckle. So if you give it a good pull, you can see it's keeping itself even. So just join it together with some slip stitching all the way down and then we'll carry on from that point. So I'm all the way down to the other side I'm going in the back loop of the one and the front loop appearing on the other and then that's it. So when you pull these apart, I have to say this is <laughs> really quite stunning um, in person. So now we have to get rid of all of our loose ends and this is gonna take me a bit of time. Uh, getting rid of loose ends is not a big deal breaker for me. I don't mind it because it means that you're done. So what I wanna do is I wanna work my way through the project now and I'm gonna just show you one demonstration and then you can do the rest on your own. To get rid of your loose ends, if it appears on the front side, I want you to just uh, take the yarn and just feed it through the eye of a tapestry needle and just feed it through the back side of it. I want you to concentrate on the back side of being on the project. So you might have left a, a, a long enough a tail to do it. If you have not left it long enough, just feed the, um, the needle in and then feed the yarn onto the tapestry needle. I want you just to drag it through the colors on the back. So don't let that needle pop out to the front. So just point it through once and when you pull it, don't make it look like it's gonna warp a project. Go back the other direction for twice and back in the other direction. Third time is a charm. Three times the project can never uh, stretch in three different directions at one time. So therefore three times allows you to be able to trim that right down and then get rid of any evidence that it's even there. So what I want you to do is that I want you to work your way throughout your project and get rid of all your tails and then we're gonna come back then and we're gonna sew this side together with the other side to make the cowl and then you're completely done. So in this part of the tutorial we're going to join the edge. Now I've already done this before. I did this actually on an airplane and uh, it turned out pretty good and I really ruined the other side here. So what I decided to do because I didn't have a needle with me because I was on an airplane, I just did a single crochet or a slip stitch kind of join on the back. It looks terrible. So I felt to my point of view that I, I did all this work to it so that I, I just kind of ruined it with the seam line. So what I would, what I uh, strongly recommend, let's talk about that. So this was almost kind of like a whip stitching. So what happens is that if the color doesn't match each other, you can clearly see it. So what I'm going to do, propose to you, is to do kind of like a corset method where you're just going in and out but not around like a whip stitch. So I just woven in my ends last night so this is the good side of the project. So what I want to do is that I wanna take the, the good side, leave it facing up and put the two edges over here and what we're going to do is choose whatever yarn that we have left and we want to put it together really tightly so that it matches everything completely as you go and you wanna keep this strand on the inside of your cowl. So what I want to do is create a slip knot on the one side of the yarn strand that we're about to use and then put your dark, uh, tapestry needle on the other side. And what we're going to do is that we're just gonna go back and forth on this side of the project so don't ever go to the good side. And we're gonna start right down at the, at the base. So we're just gonna go across. Okay, so try not letting that needle going to the other side so it ends up in the front. So just pull through and don't pull it all the way. Stop at that slip knot and insert your hook or your, um, your tapestry needle through it and then that'll lock it into position. 
and you're gonna take it at this at the end and just weave it in your ends. So matching to the other side, stay on the inside of the project. I'm gonna probably keep saying that, it's probably gonna annoy you. And I'm just going to go across. So you're thinking to your point, this purple doesn't match. Well if you do it right, it should not appear on the other side. So what you want to do is that you wanna come across and then tap into some more fibers on the inside. Let's get rid of this hook. And then coming across and tapping in. So you see I'm not kind of going in a, in a whip stitching format and see how everything's pulling together nice and tightly so you don't see it on the other side. So coming across. I was thinking to my point of view before filming this, how am I gonna film this so that everything stays hidden? And I realized that the secret is, is just to go in and across and just stay on the back side. So what I want you to do is just matching everything pull it nice and snug and then when you look to the other side so you don't even see the purple in there. So go all the way down and then what I want you to do is then I'll meet you at the end of this and we'll fasten off together and call this quits for today. So I'm coming up to the conclusion then of just sewing this together. Actually I've never joined a project like this before. It just occurred to me when I was in a dream that I should and uh, it's actually kind of neat because it's actually really well hidden on the other side. So you know you learn things in time. That's one thing I love about crochet that keeps me addicted to it is that the learning process is always constant. Once you get all the way to the top just pull it nice and tight and you hopefully you've been doing that all along. When I pull it over so you don't even see any of the stitch work uh, like that I just did. So what I want to do is that I want to hide this in. So I'm just gonna stay to the inside of the project and just make it go around in a loop and I want to feed it in three times. So staying to the inside I should not see this needle on the other side and I don't. I can also feel it too. So one and then come back underneath the stitches again two and three. And then what I want to do then is that I want to go back to the other side where I started I left a little bit of an extra long yarn tail there when I was there. So recommendations to finish off. What I would probably recommend is that uh, you just damp it a little bit and uh, just lay flat um, to let it dry and when you do that it's called blocking. So you can block it so that you can take its right shape. You know when you crochet you always cause yarn that was in a, in a ball to be in a stitch work. So when you damp it a little bit it causes the fibers to relax and then therefore you can shape it like that. So let's turn it the other way. So here is my finished cowl. So here's the seam line. You can see it's much better than it was before. Almost, It's almost hidden. Not 100% but it never will be and uh, it's awesome. And then what you can just do is turn it over. You see the front side of the project. So I'm gonna damp it a little bit. Give it a good uh, few stretches and then it's good to go and this is awesome. So you're going to notice that the way that the designer did it that the tops will be open a little bit more than the interior so that it can sit on top of your shoulders and it can also fold down a little bit uh, for your neck. So until next time it's Mikey on behalf of the Crochet Crowd as well as my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. This is a sampler cowl using Karen and Pantone. We'll see you again real soon and have a great day. Bye bye.